At the beginning, I was talking, or the jury was talking, about different world views in the selection, and now we switch into a completely uh, different one. Before we start the film by Alessandro Bavari, uh, let me briefly introduce you to him. Uh, Alessandro is an Italian artist who studied scenography, photography, history of art, and various other topics at the Academy of Fine Arts in Rome. Uh, he developed a strong grounding in the diverse uh, technologies uh, of painting, like of oil, of watercolors, and, 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 and. And at the same time, he started to experiment with mixing the different techniques and explored the photographic uh, printing techniques. In 93, he started, he edited digital manipulation to his art, developing a very personal artistic language. Uh, he uses, this language uses industrial and organic products from nature before incorporating the photographic process. And uh, then the, and now I cite you, the computer digitization, which leads to a kind of contamination among the arts, dissolving the boundaries which distinguish them. And the golden Nike for Alessandro Bavari was not a first winning favorite for the jury, and I read you from the statement. While some of us didn't necessarily share the apocalyptic view of the film, we found that it left the most indelible impression. And later, Jury says, what starts in a cinematic, kinetic, yet clean field of geometry and bodies gradually evolves or devolves into the artist's vision of a nightmarish black and white world created by a continual collision of the human and the architectural form. It finally culminates in a screaming dance among the ruins in an impressive virtuoso tour de force. Alessandro Barbari creates a constant mulle of grime, projectile muck, and dust among collapsing spaces as the stage for metaphor metamorphosing human bodies with branching limbs that seem to constantly break the architectural environment apart. Well, this was the jury statement, and uh, now let's watch the film in full length.
As you have seen, this is a real audiovisual uh, art piece, and that's what uh, Alessandro is really concentrating, concentrating on. Uh, Alessandro, c'est maintenant à toi de prendre la parole. Before he starts, uh, just an, an, uh, an explanation, he will do it in, in Italian. It will be translated uh, in German and from our charming translators here into English. Buongiorno a tutti. Guten, guten Tag allen. Allora, quello che cercherò di spiegarvi perché ho fatto ho prodotto Metacaos e, e come l'ho realizzato. Now I'd like to talk to you about why I did Metacaos and how I did it. I sometimes wondered why I called my work Meta Chaos and not just Chaos. Chaos, in the true sense of the word, means something extremely negative, chaotic, and irreversible. But for me, chaos looked at from an artistic and perhaps also from a romantic point of view. For me, chaos is something very creative, something positive, something that gives rise to something new. If I may use a metaphor, uh, the inner chaos of many artists, experienced by many artists uh, like Caravaggio, who was a controversial personality. Or Van Gogh. Basquia. <laughs> These were artists who, thanks to their inter internal chaos, uh, allowed art to develop further. Without these artists, perhaps we would still be representing nothing but the virgin and the child. And therefore, for myself, uh, I felt I should call it meta chaos to express my idea of chaos. Meta uh, comes from Greek, and it means going beyond, going beyond chaos. So there is something that w wants to make chaos irreversible. Chaos as such is artificial. There is chaos in nature, 
It's part of nature and chaos creates life. For me, matter chaos is something irreversible given the social unrest, uh, uh, given the existence of war and hatred. Meta chaos, that is meta, derives from an amoeba that continues changing its form. It reproduces through mitosis or partogenesis. This is the basis of my work, mutation of bodies, a continuous transformation. The work starts with two uh, conflicting forces. It's um, a classic metaphor which stands either for life and death, for yin and yang, for good and evil. When the two forces meet and when one pre prevails over the other, when one force is stronger than the other, the result will be matter chaos, uh, um, a convergence and mingling of different forces. Metachaos basically consists of a video, 10 photographies, 10, 10 photographs, and a number of paintings. I did use the form of video because it was my intention to incorporate or, or to introduce motion to still images. I'm originally a photographer and a painter, and this video allowed me to introduce motion. I tried in this video to incorporate all my experience, everything I had learned during my studies of art, including my experience, my attitude, my opinions, my approaches as a photographer and a painter.
to make this approach even clearer, I decided to base this video on spontaneous ideas um, without a real line of telling a story. The sound, which is by an American, there again, this was developed step by step. There was a, we had a soundtrack, and then we added the video, and then we did the fine tuning. As far as the video recording is concerned, originally they were made on an abandoned industrial site. I myself and a colleague of mine made the recordings and we both decided to use a live camera. To achieve the tremolo effect, we even removed the stabilizer from the camera objective. As I am an artist who has grown up with a traditional art forms like painting and photography, I tried to incorporate these techniques in my video. I used ink a great deal ink diluted with water and record it as it flows. I dissolved particles in water. I was working with liquid iron because liquid iron also has magnetic fields. As far as the animation is concerned, uh, of course, it was done in 3D using a special so software, XXSI, Zeta Brush, for example. For the geometrical shapes, uh, I used fractals, fractal shapes, different software for the for the architectural shapes. Uh, 
so we used After Effect for editing and Media Media Cento were used for the montage. So what else can I tell you? I've brought a DVD which shows the different layers. It shows how uh, the work was made. First, you can see the individual scenes, the way they were shot. On this uh, image, you just saw the ink flowing down the paper. And using the tracking camera, I was able to incorporate 3D scenes. The tracking camera uh, was necessary because um, I had been shooting uh, the video with live cameras and the movements recorded by the live camera had to be adjusted to the scene. The tracking camera allows you to transform the motions recorded by the live camera into a curve and then to incorporate them into the scene. As you can see, Everything was recorded in 3D except for uh, some free particles or the liquid iron. Well, that ends my presentation. I think I've said everything that needs to be said. If you have any questions, I think David, you take this one so they could sit one beside the other. You no, you take the other seat. So that, here. That yeah, yeah, of course, of possible. course, please. Yeah, yeah. So you've seen two very different pieces, and I guess if you have questions, please ask. Yeah, please. Reason. Is there a specific reason why you chose to not uh, render all the scenes in, in great detail and everything is sort of pixelated still? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing that for years, like, it's a preview render. It just makes life so much easier, you know? I mean, most of the scenes you saw are, it's basically like 
It's a hardware render. It's the same as, uh, it's basically what you see in the interface. And so when I'm compositing, it's usually just one layer. And sometimes there's two, but usually it's just one. And then color correction. And it just makes life just a lot easier, you know? I think like the whole, the general goal I've had between different projects is to try and find a really fast way of working because, you know, animation is just so much more fun when you're not stuck rendering all day, you know, especially 3D. And it has, it's, the more direct it is, the more fun it is, basically. So that's the reason, yeah. Another question? Uh, I wanted to know, um, the jury thought that all the pieces, selected pieces, uh, showing very different viewpoints for the world around us. You agree with that? Do you think that's a um, cultural question regarding your individual cultural backgrounds? Or is it a generation question? It, it could, I guess. Should I answer this one, or should we both? Both of you. It's a question for you too. It's probably. I think it's a bit, probably a little bit of both. Um, I'm definitely. You know, a lot of inspiration has come from the internet. You know, and it's it's not from painting. It's not from photography. It's like it's purely from, like the. The, the total just like, you know, just overflow of information that, that you know, that I grew up with and that, uh, that you know, inspires me. So it's, it's more like, you know, video games and the internet and also cinema and, you know, old cinema and new cinema and everything together. So, so you know, that's, that's a sort of a reference point probably for me, more so than, more so than you know, analog media. I never, I, I worked a little bit of drawing, but I'm not coming from analog media. You mean you really grew up with uh, computer? Not as much and as the television. television and well, not, cinema. Well, not as much as the generation now, but I definitely, definitely when, you know, like I didn't have YouTube obviously growing up, but um, I did have like just a lot of cartoons and video games, mm -hmm. right? So, um, yeah, basically. Alessandro, pour toi, c'est une question de génération ou de l'arrière-plan culturel hmm? Oui. Euh... Oui. C'est un peu compliqué de mixer toutes les langues. Oui, c'est aussi une question de génération parce que je suis fortunatamente le macchine con i computer a 32 anni. I do think that it's a generation issue. I myself got my first computer when I was 32 years old. Aerografia è lo strumento, è una penna collegata a un getto d'aria che spruzza il colore, serve per disegnare, per fare un certo tipo di disegni. Un, un aerografista famoso per esempio era Giger, lui lavorava con l'aerografo ed era una tecnica abbastanza avanzata in quegli anni, era una tecnica nuova. Yeah, but... I myself actually used painting techniques and aer aerography, which at that time was a very progressive modern technology, actually, at that time when I started. In 1993, I got my first Apple Macintosh, and it was then that I be became aware of what you can do with these uh, computers. Well, I had a four megabyte RAM and 80 megabyte uh, hard disk. So it wasn't easy to work with this computer.
I also worked with photography. I continued to use photography. And I worked with just ordinary film. And it was only, and just so I used analogous means, and it was only six years ago that I started working with digital photography because it had become a necessity. I would like to say I think it's a question of generations in principle, but on the other hand, I would also say that I myself am always willing to try out new technologies. I'm open towards new technologies. And there's one thing I'd like to add. If Leonardo da Vinci had been familiar with computers, he would certainly have used them, definitely. Uh, you came pretty late on, on computer animation. You are still painting. Uh, and is computer animation for you, for your former work, an extension or an alternative? Senz'altro un'espansione, senz'altro un'espansione. Proprio, proprio perché ho sentito la necessità di, ho la necessità di, di mettere in movimento quello che ho fatto con, sempre, con la fotografia, sempre fatto con la fotografia e con la pittura che al momento mi cominciano a stare anche un po' strette, quindi ho la necessità di fare questo. Poi tra l'altro... E per il motivo perché ho sempre il desiderio o il desiderio di fare quello che faccio con la fotografia e quello che faccio con il maler in movimento. E bisogna dire però... Can you hear? in 3D con i primi software. Can you hear the English? Okay, sorry I was on the wrong channel. Thanks. Eh, quali appunto in quegli anni il massimo che c'era era soft image. Eh. Aber ich muss dazu But I should like to add that in 1995 when I started with computer animation when I used the software that was available then I started using more modern software later of course soft image I started producing the first video clips using computers, which, of course, at that time were not fully matured. They didn't have the power of computers today. At that time, I always worked in a team. So these were always major projects. Meta Chaos, however, was my own work. All three. Uh, selected pieces have been done on a simple PC, have been done by individuals, and I think that would never, never have happened, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I remember a time when you, a, a journalist asked me once, you think that an individual artist can compete with industry, with the film industry? And I said, mm, I. I'm not convinced it is. And now this completely changed. I mean, the tools are available, and uh, the artist has not just to 
write software himself. Everything is available, so you can really choose and, and feel free in what you're doing. You agree with me, David? Yeah, um, it's also very easy to download software, you know. Mm. No. So, you know, it's it, that's actually an amazing phenomenon that we can all just get it pretty easily. Um, I uh, so so that's the reason that I've learned, you know, stuff is that I've been able to illegally download software. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a phenomenon, and and also. Um, the f the main the main thing is obviously that you know like the most basic computers can actually use this software right so you don't need a crazy expensive computer that's also like a new thing it used to be like you get an SGI I don't hate talking about the olden days but you know it's like now now you you can just do, you know you can this 3D software for the iPhone uh, it's it's so and it's it's okay you know so. Um, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty uh, amazing thing. Uh, are there any further projects in planning for you both? What the next film you plan? I'm uh, it's Avatar Two. It's uh, it's gonna be big. <laughs> it's mostly pornography. Um, it's really obscene pornography. It's not my script. It's actually written by um, James Cameron, but uh, he just wants a lot of sex. Um, so that's my next project, 2014. Look out for it. Okay. We are waiting for. Et Alessandro Poutois, il y a un projet. Sì, no, ma come diceva lui giustamente è vero, adesso c'è la democratizzazione della tecnologia, quindi chiunque potrebbe fare, può fare computer animation. Wie auch mein Kollege gesagt hat. Well, as my colleague said, I too feel that we are now in an age of the democratization of technology. That is to say, everyone has access to the technological tools and can use them the way he or she likes. I believe it's very important that you can compete with the film industry, but at the same time, it's also important that your projects should reflect your personal style. You should stay true to yourself. And when you do a project, it should always reflect your mind and your Style. Ma sarà un misto, sarà molto girato live, penso che anche con attori veri, con inserimento di computer grafica all'interno delle scene. As far as my future projects are concerned, uh, there's one thing that's in the pipeline. But I would say it's still in the embryonic stage. My idea is a performance with real people in combination with 3D computer animation. And I know one thing, it's going to be very grotesque or bizarre, very cruel. More cruel even than meta chaos. Allora stanno anche aspettando il tuo nuovo. Fra tre anni forse. 
well, three years from now. Any more? Oh, here we are. Uh, I would like to know what's your workflow like? I mean, do you start with an idea, I mean, conceptually, or do you draw a lot and uh, evolve it around there, or? Yeah, it always starts with the idea. Um, yeah, but I mean, with the external world, you already told us that it was something different because you had story and then you animated it, but um, the other works, like? You yeah. know, I try and change it with different projects, but what I've yeah. found is, um, I try and make the most flexible pipeline possible. And I do that by basically making like, an, like a really short render time, like I said earlier. So uh, things like design actually changes right up until the last minute. I really like that like freedom of just not, you know, you know there's certain things I could, that, are, that I manage to keep flexible uh, right up until the end. There's not much drawing. I find I, I, I'm so, f f I, like, I love modeling so much in the software that I just do it so much faster by just putting a bunch of cubes together. And you know, I've, I've got a, a big enough library of stuff now that I just, if I need a chair, I'll have like a chair. If I need a, a, a you know, whatever kind of character, I'll probably have like one I've already built. So um, it's getting fast, you know, I love that process so much and it's so fast, no render time that I just, uh, I don't have to draw or paint that much. I get help with color though. That's one thing I'm really bad at. I'm kind of colorblind, so I have a friend who takes, I give him screenshots, and then at the very end of every project, he, he just goes over it with Photoshop and paints over it. So it's color it this way. Thanks. Here's a um, question. Yeah, talking about um, growing up with video games, as a question to David, mm. and uh, the media of our time and blah, blah, blah. Um, Question, what do you think about interaction, interactive? Yeah. Um, is there, can I interact with animation um, just without pressing buttons, with constructing mini emo emotion? Is there oh, totally. a difference? Yeah, totally. Here's my, I have a problem with a lot of people's interpretation of, 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 of what interactive is. I think there's, you know, a, uh, and I'm not here to give my opinions, but honestly, because since you asked what I feel is that People say that, like you know, now because you can press a button and make something happen, that's interactive and it's it's you know it's going to engage the viewer. It doesn't happen like that because people there's a million you know people still go to the cinema. Why? And I think the reason is that you know when you actually watch a static animation or a film of any kind, like whatever, like what we saw today, you do psychologically interact with it. Like a good film, you're you're interacting with it psychologically, even though. You don't have control of when it starts and stops. You still, there's still like a good film. You'll still have that, you know, that mirror, that, that effect of like, oh, he feels sad, then I feel sad. I see something happy, I feel happy. You know what I mean? So, I think that, you know, there's there's a lot more to be done as far as like, in in the world of interactive, interactivity, um, when it comes to like, you know, emotional connection. I still think the home of that is in film, and I have lots of hope that you know it is gonna there's going to be more of a sort of bleeding between the two. But you know, I still, I, I play video games every year to see what's, what's out and stuff, and when I compare it to, you know, I still find on the, okay, they're very interactive, you can make people do whatever you want. Does it make me more emotionally engaged, comp like as, as much as like a really good film? Not yet, I think. So it's, it's um, you know, it's a fascinating thing, but I, I'm, I'm excited by both, but, but I definitely don't feel that Static or, or or not static, but you know, like let's say a linear linear video. I still think that's interactive. Thank you. No problem. We are running out of time. Thank you. I promised at the beginning. I promised to show you full length. Uh, also, the other distinction by Alexand Alex Roman. Maybe. The, they allow us to, sh to few some minutes of that. It's over 10 minutes long. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for being with us. Thank, thank, you, you. For, thank you for your entries. And uh, the next pre-forum is on interactive art, starts at 2.30.
with the winners and the session is hosted by Tomoe Moriyama.